Bicycle Academy, myself Shaker. Today I'm going to discuss different types of DC machines. I mean, what is shunt, series, compound, and other types. If you're not subscribed to our channel yet, please click the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to get immediate alerts on our new uploads. Let's get to the topic. Basic requirement of any DC machine, whether it is a DC motor or DC generator, requirement is the same. That is armature winding and magnetic flux. We explained the operation of both motor and generator in one of our videos. Just check the video links in the description for those videos, which will help you to clearly understand this concept. Coming to today's topic, that is types of DC machines, we come across different bases for classifying DC machines like based on connection, characteristics, applications and many other. Let's have a look at the classification based on connection. You can check the description for this video bookmarks, which helps you to navigate different topics directly. As I said, for any DC machine, we need armature and magnetic flux. Let's check the armature. I am representing armature with this symbol. Now question comes with magnetic flux. How to get the magnetic flux? Yes, just by placing magnet, permanent magnet. Or we can create the magnetic field by an electromagnet also. These are the only ways, these are electromagnet, these are the only ways to get the magnetic flux. Let me now consider the possibilities of DC generators. This is a symbol for armature. These two represent brushes. Okay. RA, what is mentioned here, is the resistance of the entire armature winding. We are considering a permanent magnet to create the magnetic flux in this case. In presence of the magnetic field, if these armature conductors are made rotating, if the armature conductors are rotating, then yes, EMF will be induced according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So that is represented with EG generated EMF. When we connect this armature through the brushes, if I connect to the load, then some current will flow. That current I am representing with the load current. That's what same as armature current. This type of DC generator is called a permanent magnet DC generator because we are using a permanent magnet here. The corresponding current and voltage equations. I think you can clearly say here IA is equal to IL. That's what written. Then EG, whatever voltage generated here will be supplied to the load after some drops. What is the drop here? Drop across the resistance. That's what IR drop. As we're having brushes, these brushes are made up of carbon. So they will carry some significant amount of resistance. So drop across these brushes is also added into this. That is called as brush contact drop. What if you replace this permanent magnet with an electromagnet? Because these electromagnets offer better control over flux. But of course, they require external electrical excitation. Whereas permanent magnet doesn't require any electricity. In this case, we are using a separate power supply to excite the electromagnet. That is what? Field coil. So this type of generator is called, guess what? Yes, separately excited. DC generator because of the simple reason that field is excited from a separate supply. That's it. The corresponding voltage and current equations are the current flowing in this will be equal to voltage applied by the resistance. IF is equal to VF by RF. VF is field voltage, field current, field resistance. Okay. Now here current will be IA is equal to IL. Again, Induced EMF equation is whatever EMF induced here will be transferred to the output after some drops. What is the drop? IRA drop. That is a resistance drop. If these brushes are having a significant amount of drop, we should add also that. That is called as brush contact drop. So these are the equations. Simple. Now the question comes with what if I don't have the availability of DC electrical supply? There the idea began to use generated DC voltage itself to create the magnetic field. So as I don't have electrical supply, DC electrical supply, what I am doing? I am using the same generated voltage I am connecting across the field to create the magnetic flux. So by connecting this field winding in parallel with the armature, our problem is solved. So this kind of generator is called, yeah, guess now? Yes. Self excited DC generator. All right, because here armature itself is supplying the magnetic field, armature itself is developing the magnetic field also. Hence, the name 
self accepted DC generator. Corresponding voltage and current equation, sir. You can see here IF is equal to terminal voltage. This voltage is applied across this Vt by RF. And IA is equal to IF plus IL. Simple KCL at this node. Sum of incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing current. Simple one. Then EG is equal to whatever EG generated here that will appear across the load after some drops, some drops. Those drops are IRA drop as well as BCD, not polio drops. Okay, it's a voltage drop. People started thinking, why should I connect field winding in parallel? Why not in series? Why not in series with armature? Yes, you can do that. This is also called as a self accelerated generator. Yes, it is. To distinguish these two generators. We also call this one as self accepted this is also called as self accepted if you want to distinguish these two i'll call this one as shunt field dc generator or in short dc shunt generator or simply shunt generator the word shunt means diversion because current is diverting hence shunt generator and this is called as series field dc generator in short dc series generator or simply yes series generator Corresponding voltage and current equations sir. All these currents are same. IA, ISC, IL. So they are in series simply. So these three are equal. Next, EZ is equal to whatever voltage is induced here. That will appear across the load after drops. What are the drops? Resistance drop across the armature winding. A resistance drop in the series field winding. And brush contact drop. So I can say for the time being let's let's not include brush contact drop. I'm saying EG is equal to VT plus IRA plus ISC RSC. RSC is series field resistance. So we know IA is equal to RSC. I can simplify this equation as this one, and I'm adding here brush contact drop also. Okay, there are the simple equations for a DC series generator. People were not happy yet. Why can't we use both the field windings, which will give more magnetic flux? And hence more generator voltage. There comes the idea of combining or compounding both shunt field and series field winding. And hence name of this connection is called as compound field DC generator or simply DC compound generator. And corresponding voltage and current equations sir. Yeah, give it a try. Here IA is equal to ISC. Okay. Now what about ISH? IS is equal to ISH that is shunt field is connected in parallel to the load. Okay, so ISH is equal to VT by RH, RSH, then current equation, then EG, EG is equal to terminal voltage after certain drops. Okay, so if I include brush contact drop also, we will have another term, that is it, the voltage and current, which we already know. Do you think people are happy now? No, it is not at over. Why should I connect shunt winding across the load? Why can't you connect this shunt winding just across this armature? Yes, you can do that. This is also called as compound generator, but it is named as short shunt compound generator. And this one is named as long shunt compound generator because of the reason here shunt winding is connected a little longer, but in this case shunt winding is connected a little shorter. Hence the short shunt compound and this one is long shunt compound. Corresponding voltage and current equations are as follows. They are simple network issues. Okay, you can simply understand these, th these things. So from the discussion, we can classify DC generators as two types. One is a permanent magnetic DC generator and electromagnetic type DC generator. Electromagnetic type can be further classified into two categories. One is separately excited, another one is self-excited. Self-excited again can be classified as three categories, shunt field, series field and compound field. Again in compound, we have two more categories long shunt and short shunt. After understanding everything I said, I am giving a simple question that is why in this diagram shunt field winding is of thinner cross section area, series field winding is of thick cross section area and shunt field winding is more number of turns, series field winding is less number of turns. Why is that reason? Please post your answer in the comment section. If you, if you don't know about it, please try googling and post the answer. I will see you in the next class. Let's see. How many I feel correctly posted? Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and don't forget to share the video with your friends.